good seeing you up here. Thanks a lot. So what makes you the perfect candidate to talk about trust? At least my colleagues had enough trust and confidence in me to present this topic here. Okay, then I'm all ears and curious whether your colleagues are right or not. Thanks a lot. So what is important for us as human beings? First of all, safety. Also, it's very important to have a sense of belonging and also a sustainable future to live in for us and our future generations. Also, acknowledgement is very important. Acknowledgement from our partners, our consumers, our friends, family. And of course, health is very important. Also, quality, quality of the products and the goods we produce and we consume. And all of these different kind of topics are coming with trust. Trust in the people we work with, trust in the products we use and consume, and trust in the systems we work with. But what happens if this trust is broken? So let's take, for example, a recall scenario from the food and beverage industry. So recall scenario means we have to recall some of the products because they are not up to a certain quality or up to a certain standard. And this is, by the way, not that seldom because mistakes can happen. So over 50% of the companies have once or more a recall per year. And it's not only the direct costs which have a huge financial impact, but also the indirect costs of these kind of recalls. Because you need to gather the right information from different kinds of systems, maybe from an MES system, from the ERP system, from the MOM, and you have to identify which kind of products are being affected. And then you have to gather these teams and have to inform your consumers or your partners, the wholesalers. So you have to go along this value chain and have to identify which products are being affected. So these direct and indirect costs are massive. Also, it's not only the financial impact, but also the reputational loss, which comes along with that. And the trust, also the losing of the trust from the, from the consumers is a very huge impact, which can happen. 15% of the consumers would never buy this product again. And 21% of the consumers have trust issues. They would not buy from this manufacturer again. So when this scenario can happen, and as I said, mistakes can happen, what do we need to do? So we need to act quickly and precisely. Therefore, we need transparency along this value chain. This transparency is not only important for these kind of recall scenarios. We could also have other scenarios or use cases where this transparency along the value chain is crucial. For example, difficulties in finding counterfeit how can I make sure that the ingredients or the components I put into my product are original or up to a certain standard so that they are not fake? So fighting counterfeit is next to the recall scenario, also a very important topic. Also, how can I <coughs> optimize the quality? Optimizing the quality because a lot of products have to be certified, have to be audited along this whole trail, and you need to make sure that from the raw material, through the pre-processing, through the processing of the goods, that they're up to a certain standard. So optimizing the quality can only be successful if you have transparency along this value chain. Another topic is also the lack of transparency for consumers. Might be the end consumers, but maybe also the customers. So when they want to know, so they are shifting from a brand loyalty more to a data-driven loyalty. They want to know, OK, how have my products, my goods been processed? Where do they come from? So they're asking more and more on these kind of questions. And this is where they require more and more information. And also, this comes with fulfilling governmental laws and regulations. So there are a lot of regulations, not only in the food and beverage, but also in other industries, so where we need this kind of uh, information and this transparency. Maybe one point also is the lifetime history of a product. That means I, have the, I want to, from the cradle, to the recycling of a product. I need kind of information, where do the raw materials are coming from? How have them been processed? How do they behave in the field? And then later on, when it goes into the circular economy, can I recycle them? Can I reuse them? Do I need to get them out of the life cycle or can I still reuse them? So this kind of life cycle of a product is also very important. 
So this is where trusted traceability comes into play because trusted traceability makes this kind of genealogy or this family tree of the product visible along the value chain. And we do this by linking the right information from the right systems, not only gate to gate within one producer or within one manufacturer, but also across the whole value chain. So the different kind of, let's say, data which are required for the different kind of use cases, if it's a recall scenario, if it's a product lifetime history, if it's a whatever kind of scenario is, requires certain kind of data. And this data is coming from maybe an MES system, an ERP system, or maybe directly from the automation controls. And all these kind of data are being linked then into a distributed ledger. So what we do not want to do is replicate data, but link the right information in this trusted layer across all of the different systems. And when we have this kind of data, we can go within the different scenarios. For example, forward traceability, like this kind of recall scenarios. Where have my goods, my products been delivered to? So in case of a recall scenario, I can act quickly and precisely. All the proof claims that I say, where did my ingredients come from? So this kind of backward traceability, which we're addressing with trusted traceability. And that might sound now a little bit abstract. So let's make it a little bit more concrete, a little bit more crisp. So I need my coffee every day. And maybe not only one, maybe also two or three, or when I'm here on stage and had a long night, maybe even four. And how can I trust the manufacturer that this coffee is up to a certain quality? Or how can the manufacturer prove that this coffee is up to a certain quality? So if we would have a use case like this or a scenario like this, normally we would start with a simulation. So the simulation starts with the digital twin where we show and where we simulate where do the different kind of ingredients come from. And very important and very interesting here is to see this change of ownerships, like from the producer to the trader to the different kind of distributors and the loading, unloading, all these kind of information to get the details across these kind of um, topics. And then we are within the factory, of course, where we have maybe an MES system, where we have an ERP system, where we have SCADA and automation systems, and we link all the right information, depending on which kind of information we need and for the use case, in this trusted layer. And of course, they are brewing, they are processing, they are grinding. So for this coffee, uh, demon coffee example, and when we have this information, then we can span this genealogy tree, we can make this family tree visible. And not only with the information from the kind of different like process steps, but also enrich that with IoT data. So how was the temperature during a certain process step? So has there been any quality violations or other information we have in there? And from this kind of information, I can then gather or put together a lifetime history of the product and can make it visible for the shop floor quality manager, whoever needs this kind of information. So what are the benefits for you, maybe as a manufacturer? First of all, streamlining the corrective actions. That means if mistakes happen, or they could happen, then you want to act quickly and precisely. You want to identify, OK, what has happened? What has been affected? What do I need to do right now? And this is where trusted traceability can help you. Also reducing the risks, so the financial impact, the impact of brands, the impact um, for, for any kind of use case, which I've shown before. So reducing this kind of risk is also what we are targeting at. And also directly reporting to customer demands. And the customers not necessarily have to be the end consumers, but maybe also the customers you're delivering to. If it's a wholesaler, if it's, if it's an end user, or whoever is there along this value chain. Another benefit is when we certify products, or if they are, for example, contract laboratories, who are checking what is the quality of the product goods. They can also work with this kind of transparency because they do all the tests. They have the laboratory information systems or other tools, calibrated equipment or consumables to make sure that quality and the products are up to a certain standard. And this is what we also support. Because we want to optimize the use and reuse of resources and goods. And we want to make sure that these valuable resources you put into your processing or in your, in your production process are being preserved because they are valuable. How do we do such a project, for example, for trusted traceability at Siemens? Normally, we start with a consulting phase. And then within this consulting phase, we determine what are the pain points, what are the use cases, what do you want to try to achieve? 
And then we analyze, okay, how does your process look like? Which kind of information do we need? Which kind of details, to which kind of details do we need to go? And then we determine in the next steps, we not only make the concept, but also implement that together with you and for you. To then span also this genealogy tree and the family tree for the value chain. And when we have that implemented, of course, we can do the operations for you as well. And then optimize, like, for example, starting somewhere within your factory, with your manufacturing process, and then later on, go across the value chain. This is what we, what we are doing. This is what we do with trusted traceability. And we want to be your trusted advisor here in this kind of process with you. Because trust isn't everything, but without trust, everything is nothing.